Hello, friends. Bible study, the Niv, Acts, uh, chapter 18, starting at verse 23, so where we left off, and then going into chapter 19 to verse 12. So we're going to finish off the, uh, the parable Priscilla, Aquila, and Apollos. After spending some time in Antioch, Paul set out from there and traveled from place to place throughout the region of Galatia and Py Pyrigia, P-H-R-Y-G-I-A, however you pronounce that, strengthening all the disciples. So, you know, lifting everybody's spirits. Yeah, I like to do that too. Meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, you know, Okay, uh, came to Ephesus. Alexandria is in Egypt. Okay, he was so you know, you're talking a Greek name in Egypt, but it's a Greek town, like it was established there, right? Uh, who yet is a Jew? Greek Jews and do exist. Uh, I know one. Matter of fact, uh, he was a learned man with a thorough knowledge of the scriptures. And by that, they mean the laws of Moses, because the book of the Bible had not yet been written for them to go by. All these people had to memorize things. You had to be wealthy to afford a Torah. So most people had to memorize the laws. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord and spoke with great fever. Or with the fever in 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 the spirit this is sometimes how that's uh, written and taught about jesus accurately though he knew only of the baptism of john okay so educated in jewish law accepting jesus as the messiah he looked at the scriptures and said this guy's the messiah and that's because he had no skin in the game back in jerusalem for who was in charge because he wasn't living there so he's looking at it empirically, whereas for the Sanhedrin and the Pharisees, we're looking at it from what do we lose if we go to this? He began to speak boldly in the synagogue, but when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they invited them into their home and explained the way of God more adequately. So they taught him what Paul taught them. Because this is how this works. It's a game of telephone. When Apollos wanted to go to Acacia, the brothers encouraged him and wrote to the disciples uh, there to welcome him. Now, I could spell out for you this, but we actually have this kind of plant here because I live in the desert. I can indeed and do intend to grow all of the uh, plants that they list. I've already started that they list in the uh, in the Old Testament um, because my climate is favorable for that kind of gardening. So that's my intention since I use those types of things in my daily life. The brothers encouraged him and wrote to him to the disciples there to welcome him. On arriving, he was a great help to those by grace had believed. He was a great help to those who by great by grace had believed yeah for he vigorously refuted the jews in public debate proving the scriptures that jesus was the christ so he is a very fervent, well-educated preacher and you know that makes all the difference that's how the holy spirit likes to channel through people and out to others now we're in chapter 19 paul and Ephesus. uh chapter 19 verse 1 while apollos was in corinth Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples and asked them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Or after you believed? They answered, No. We have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So can you imagine that? People roaming about the world who have no idea who the Holy Spirit is. To me, my brain just is like, What? Because I've known who the Holy Spirit was since I was a very small child. And not just because I went to church. Because we didn't really regularly go to church as a family. I found friends who went to church. And then I would go to church with them. When my family didn't go to church. Because I knew what the Holy Spirit was. 
even with my parents not taking me to church. So that's a very confusing thing to me because I've basically spent my whole life with the Holy Spirit. So I'm like, what? Now, that's only capable of happening because Jesus died on the cross for me. So there's that. So Paul asked, then what baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told people to believe in the one coming after him. That is in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. So sometimes it is necessary to get baptized multiple times in one's life. Just remember that. Whatever you did to get in alignment, you got to stay in alignment. For me personally, I have a, a garden tub and I give myself an energy treatment, which I do offer on the channel for it's a healing process. Um, and I give myself one of those treatments every Saturday. So I give myself what is the equivalent of a mikvah bath. It's a holy spirit bath. It's got holy anointed oil. It's got pink Himalayan salt. Sometimes I put drops of holy water in there. It's a rebaptism. I go full under and full out before I give myself that treatment. It is a necessary thing. I give myself what I call a spirit shower every morning too. While I'm in the shower and I'm washing the, you know, the sweat of the night before, whatever it is, because I live in the desert and it's 106 degrees here all day long and it's like 80 at night. So it gets kind of gross. Okay, people take showers multiple times a day as a result. When I take them, as the soap is rinsing all the sweat and dirt and germs off my body, I rinse off all this 5D energy from anybody who wishes to do me harm. And that's every morning in order so to keep myself in alignment with the Lord. In order to do this, just to do this in a video with you, which is also about keeping myself in alignment with the Lord because it's about how we interact with the 3D realm that determines whether we are a good person or not. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came to them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied because when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you gain abilities. Prophesizing is about predicting the future. That's what he gives you. Superpowers. You go into the Old Testament, there are occasions in there in which the prophets, the main prophets, the ones who could activate and use the Ark of the Covenant, uh, you know, could do miraculous things. And the Old Testament uh, thing today, which was uh, Kings, Second Kings, and uh, chapters 12 and 13, um, just a dead body touching the bones of the prophet Elisha, E-L-I-S-H-A. He came back to life. And there were instances with other prophets where they get super strength or they get super speed or they get super powers when they need them. Because it's not them. It's the Holy Spirit through them. There were about 12 men in all. Paul entered the synagogue and spoke boldly there for three months, arguing persuasively about the kingdom of God. But some of the men became obstinate. They refused to believe and pub publicly maligned the way. They got salty and they got aggressive. Now, Paul's got an aggressive nature to him. We know that from when he was Saul. Because keep in mind, this is a man who was so invigorated that the death of Stephen happened and then he hunted them down to kill them, which is why he has problems everywhere he goes, even though he's in alignment with the Lord. Because it tells us, even in the Old Testament of the Bible, that you reap what you sow. Jesus says that in those succinct words. But they talk about generational karma. What you put out, you get back. So if you attack, expect to have problems in those worlds. 
people, he wanted people to die for their belief in Jesus. So the Jews wanted him to die for his belief in Jesus. So Paul left them because he wasn't getting anywhere. He took the disciples with him and had discussions daily in the lecture hall of Tyrannus. This went on for two years so that all the Jews and Greeks who lived in the province of Asia heard the word of the Lord. God did extraordinary miracles through Paul because he was in alignment. But that doesn't mean it wipes out your past. You still have to pay your penance for your past. That's part of how you show him. You show him that you love him. So even, so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick and their illnesses were cured and the evil spirits left them. Because it's not a matter of whether or not Paul had faith. He did. Once he decided to believe in Jesus, he had such strong conviction that that same strong conviction that made him want to slaughter people made him want to heal people. And it can have a miraculous effect on people that way. The Holy Spirit changes you in such a way that you don't want to hurt people. But it doesn't mean you get to escape whatever you did before. Until it is that that is balanced out by enough good deeds to cancel out the harm you've done, you're still in a state of penance. We need penance. Penance is what makes us want to make amends. Penance is how we show. Guilt shows us where we need penance more specifically. Guilt is what we're feeling that makes us want to do penance. Penance is amends. Penance is how you're interacting with the world differently to be better. Because when you know better, you do better. Penance. Like if you're in a place where you know you owe somebody an apology, but you can't go apologize to them in the 3D, then you're not doing penance. You're too much in your ego to be able to admit what you did wrong. And until you can admit what you did wrong and make penance, you don't get released from that energy. So as you go about the world today, remember that you reap what you sow. And you either are building your future one present moment at a time in the joy and the light and the way and walk in the narrow path. Or you're holding on to that ego and not willing to say sorry, even though you feel guilty. Because you're holding on to that past and you want to walk that highway path to that other place. Those are choices. Let's make smart ones today and consider how our ego affects those around us for the negative so that we can be the better versions of us that the world needs us to be.